Kishore. Thanks for spending your time. Pleasure. Last five years, growing at a CAGR of 30% or so, given the, and much of it, of course, thanks to the softwareization trend, and that was a big risk, calculated risk, one may call, when yeah. you yeah. took that uh, kind of business reorientation, which happened in 2019 or so. Yeah. So uh, this run rate will be, I would say, relatively easy or maybe even better as the, as the <laughs> megaton progresses? No. So thank you. Pleasure talking to you. So I think uh, uh, when we started at 2019, naturally, uh, uh, we were a pretty small company uh, uh, from, uh, you know, we had divested more than 70% of our business. And uh, that time, uh, we we knew that this is the field which is changing very fast. There is going to be transformation. Initially, it was going to be what we call case, which was electrification, autonomous, uh, right, shared mobility, connected. Uh, and we focused on those technology domains, etc. But very soon, we, uh, as we always do, we had invested early enough into uh, the software-defined vehicle area, and specifically uh, the. Uh, architecture part, middleware, operating system, et cetera, to transform that. And that has really driven our growth uh, now. And uh, uh, so the point is even this year, as you know, we have revised our uh, growth estimate more than 37% and profitability more than 20%. Uh, so we, naturally this has been phenomenal here. And, uh, uh, you know, as I said, uh, we started with a small place now. We are, we are of, of a size too. But we do uh, see these opportunities in future. Our markets are big. They are growing. Uh, 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 the OEM spent is increasing 9% year on year in these areas. On, on software uh, on related so technologies? On software technologies. Uh, all the growth of their new spent, uh, more than 25% is in uh, software. Whatever overall spent they are doing. So, so software spent at least 9% is going to grow. And we believe there are more opportunities beyond uh, new areas we see than what people have worked out. So uh, we see good opportunity, good growth environment. Um, I mean, uh, we always said we'll be ahead uh, in the industry. Uh, we'll always give the uh, you know more estimates as we move forward year to year. But uh, the growth environment we see reasonable. So you are saying currently about nine percent of the whole R and D spend is directed towards. Software, softwareization? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is 25% of R&D spent is moved towards softwareization. Software. And every year it is growing, growing by, by 9%. 9%. And I must say that there are, you know, I've seen many uh, media houses approach us immediately that they see one news item that some other company has signed a smaller deal or whatever deal, mm -hmm. uh, reasonable deal with, with a, one of our clients. And what is the impact on it? See, it's a huge spend. There is enough space for many people. We, what is our goal is in new technology area. We are the, we have the dominant share. That's what it is. Now, these OEM companies also want to own some part of their software. They want to build their technology, uh, also competencies. They will come to India. They will develop their centers, right? And uh, we'll also in some way initially help them to seed also sometimes. But... Uh, um, I mean, now some of the OEMs are also looking at if they can do joint ventures and come to OEM instead of doing their own right. with somebody. So there are many models which will evolve. But for us, we are very focused that our value proposition is cutting edge technologies, bringing the best of the uh, practices across the industry, working with more OEMs, because that's what we do. So uh, we are... Uh, we, we are beyond these models and we are more interested in really helping them solve their future problems. Talking about future, mm -hmm. uh, autonomous driving is one of the mega trends. Absolutely. But uh, this is what I have discussed or hear from some of the industry le uh, leaders and uh, mm. technology uh, experts. The uh, ADAS, uh, the autonomous driving mega trend, perhaps has kind of got off to some very good start but it's kind of uh, slowing down. It's not moving as fast as expected as compared to, let's say, a connected vehicle trend, which is to some, they say that it's moving much faster than expected. Absolutely. So connected uh, 
I'm I'm agreeing with you on the second part, connected connected part. But uh, I must say that uh, if you look, take a little longer period, autonomous uh, spend is growing, and uh, there is a different way of autonomous. Uh, uh, so almost all vehicles will be three plus level um, in next three four years. Almost every reasonable model of the car will be three plus autonomous. Do you see it across all major markets, or mainly in, uh, concentrated maybe in uh, North American Europe? Uh, North America, Europe, even Asia, uh, most of the uh, big markets in India, maybe little bit here and there, but it will come. And even now, I mean, there are some cars in come India to uh, level two, but uh, you will see some three plus uh, coming in next four, to four because that's what it will happen. Uh, but uh, um, I think uh, the commercial vehicles also has a lot of potential for uh, because that's a real business case, or if I have to say the fleets. Uh, that has a real business case. The value proposition is totally different there. Totally. And, and perhaps uh, in some cases, can we argue that the value proposition is much stronger there Absolutely. compared to passenger vehicles? Absolutely, in both the, these cases. So I believe uh, uh, there will be higher spend and uh, uh, new features coming in. Uh, and uh, what autonomous drives is also very important. It is not an open, is not by itself. See, when there is an autonomous vehicle of a certain type, actually... Uh, the passengers are free to do what they want to do and, uh, and their uh, how they will use their time how they will be engaged more productively uh, those are the use cases and um, OEMs also will benefit from those therefore are you also looking at perhaps new business avenues like let's say uh, interiors or something like that because uh, <coughs> like the moment it will reach L4 and eventually L5, certain things will be redundant in the vehicle. So you need not be, let's say, front facing or the dashboard may be used for something else. Absolutely. Things will change. And uh, there are two more important areas we are looking in with this change is a customer experience, client experience, how he's, how a different experience it sees from what it is today, multiple ways. And um, even uh, uh, rec uh, recently we have taken one small stake in a uh, casual gaming company. It's also the similar thing because in autonomous vehicle, you'll get a lot of time. And, uh, you know, uh, when there is a family, you can engage in a very nice, fruitful way. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying there may be many use cases like this. And uh, that's one part. And the second is the underlying data will help you to improve the vehicles, their design. Um, it will improve you to give them more services. And... Uh, those are the avenues uh, also we have seen. I was coming to that, the recent announcement of a, the, a part stake uh, by mm -hmm. at uh, the, this uh, gaming uh, company. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what was the rationale behind that? And do you see that also kind of you know, becoming gradually a key portion of our overall business? We are looking at it as a part of the cockpit of the future, as we have said. It's a cockpit of the future because, and specifically with autonomous coming in, it will be a different cockpit. So what are the new technologies or the new use cases will go? I think we were looking at it from that perspective. And see, some of these things you have to be ahead of curve and invest ahead of time to explore. But uh, I think uh, this is something which is a very, uh, if I had to say, one of a very strong case. Uh, does the uh, uh, agreement terms also allow you to enhance your stake and maybe a majority saying perhaps a full acquisition? Uh, not there yet, uh, but uh, our goal is to take a reasonable stick and uh, just see how this space evolves and uh, uh, specifically use it more enhancing the client experience, our client experience and enhancing um, um, the data, uh, uh, data usage for improving their experience as well as the design of the car. And also, the, uh, uh, more often than not, when you talk about ADAS or autonomous driving, we tend to concentrate mainly and exclusively on, into some, in, a, in some uh, cases, exclusively only on the passenger vehicle segment. But as you're saying, uh, commercial vehicles also. Absolutely. You know, and on the other side of the spectrum, two wheelers also. It, there is ADAS and there is ARAS also, you know, autonomous, uh, 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 or uh, advanced riding and assistance uh, systems. So uh, do, you, uh, do you plan to kind of you know, uh, offer solutions for that? And what, how do you see those segments progressing in terms of adoption of we are, we are focusing on we are focusing on passenger car and commercial car and uh, fleets and this but uh, uh, 
as a part of a overall experience end to end this solution may come in but we are not focusing on two wheeler as a segment and also on in terms of on the electrification uh, mega trend uh, you have a good stake there as well and uh, of but of late there have been reports of some kind of a slowdown or some things not moving as it was perhaps uh, perhaps also losing steam maybe in some cases do you see some kind of uh, slowdown happening in the ev uh, adoption rate see we are there for long term and if you look at it uh, the first thing is uh, there is a lot of clean energy uh, motive and i think that's certainly a trend which will not go down slow down there will be alternate technologies which will come whether it is a fuel cell hydrogen uh, multiple uh, some other different batteries so we are all involved in multiple things we invest ahead of time uh, and even now if you look at it i think people are committed to that i think the people are not sure about the production numbers so but the software is not dependent upon number of vehicles sold it is software is dependent on you know new program how efficient you can make etc and frankly the way we look at the sdv or this is it will reduce the overall cost of software for oems actually then they spending in multiple buckets it is more centralized it will bring more efficiency so from that perspective i do not see in any issues actually we can help them to improve their cost efficiency and uh, <clears throat> over the years really kpit has kind of you know uh, spread itself quite, quite uh, well i would say in many uh, global markets uh, so uh, how do you plan to kind of you know uh, kind of strengthen this or expand this uh, global play and you know, uh, or build uh, kpit technologies further as a global company and which are the key markets that you see will drive this and where i think we are one of the most well balanced in the portfolio in terms of europe presence you uh, us and uh, the fastest uh, and reasonable presence in asia and growing fast and in addition to that we look at india china as a uh, big markets and we are investing into it now and uh, so overall i see uh, it as a really global company because my clients are global uh, the second thing is uh, Uh, we can serve where they are and uh, we understand the uh, nuances of different markets so uh, actually uh, as you know i think uh, we have a very significant presence in europe uh, and uh, there are many development centers we have across uh, the geographies so uh, our uh, goal is to be a truly global company and uh, we have made lot of strides in that direction and if you if you kind of split your uh, revenues how much is the india and overseas uh, i will right now i'll tell you it is it is um, we actually don't like to break it like that I'll, uh, but i will give you uh, some example uh, so it is really around uh, 35 to 40% in europe depending upon that but about 35 which is the uh, this uh, then it is between 13 35% in north america and uh, 20 20 percent plus is in asia and asia is going fast so that's how we will get it uh, in some way the difference is because when the clients are global their programs may be somewhere and they spend somewhere so it is a very difficult thing and we manage the client at a global level we don't manage it locally that's why it is a difficult to really build that. and also uh, talked about investments and you have made uh, some investments uh, for uh, some inorganic growth also over the last few year few years recent being that gaming company uh, how much of investment have kind of earmarked for the let's say for the short to mid term of 3 to 5 years we are not really looking for any inorganic uh, significant uh, investments um, uh, we would uh, like to build and stay in this environment uh, we'll make investments which are required and if we find something which is extraordinary we'll make investment we we don't look at it but right now where we are today we believe we can do a lot of that organically unless we see a very different area where uh, if you see build versus buy it's uh, hard to do mm-hmm. you know or uh, it's a innovation new uh, really a leadership in a particular technology that's the only way we will go for but as of now we don't see any areas uh, in the immediate future lastly do you see uh, autonomous driving when i say autonomous i mean l4 or maybe l5 also uh, becoming a reality in india at some point or do you think there are other pain points 
um, uh, that India needs to resolve in, with, with I technology? I think L3, L3 plus uh, for sure. Um, and in certain segment, it will come. Like you see uh, certain fleets in certain area or um, in a... <clears throat> If I have to say, like in airports, in some of those areas, internal traffic, etc. will happen. Uh, there may be <coughs> certain, like what we have metros, there may be intercity. Those kind of things can develop. It will take some more time in India kind of a situation. But um, no, certainly it will come. But your engineers are developing uh, algorithms for the unique Indian market as well? <laughs> there are, see, uh, new features which, which are required, every market. So we, be, we always believe in um, innovating for the market. So we will certain, and we have some ideas and we'll develop some for uh, the local markets. We'll keep a track on that. Yeah, Kishore, sure. always a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank and you. Uh, there you heard uh, Kishore Patel, co-founder, MD and CEO of KPIT Technology, sharing his views on the on, uh, autonomous uh, driving mega trend, as well as uh, the company's growth prospects and if, India will also see L4 and L5 level of autonomous driving. Thanks for watching this interview. Take care and goodbye.